All right, so there was a comment in the video that I put up last week, my favorite new Phil, and it said something like, anytime Mike's wearing a hat, I know it's gonna be a fun lesson, which means anytime I'm not wearing a hat, it's not gonna be a fun lesson. I remember when I read that, I was like, oh, bro, wait until my next lesson, because now that you've said that, it's gonna be all fun. But just so you guys know, I don't actually have a schedule for my lessons. I don't plan them out months in advance and like say, okay, this is gonna be the October 17th video. I honestly play drums all week long and then if something hits me and I think like, oh my God, I love that thing. I have to share that with the world. That's how I make my YouTube videos. And that's why sometimes it goes three weeks without a video. It's because there is no plan. I'm waiting to be inspired. I don't wanna press record on the video so that I can get more followers or so that I can keep up with some sort of algorithm. I couldn't care less about that stuff. I press record because there's something bubbling inside me that I have to share with you. So, all that being said, I was hoping this would be a fun lesson. Unfortunately, he was right. This is not gonna be fun. I'm not wearing a hat. This is not gonna be fun. This is a pretty advanced thing to be able to do. Basically, we're playing a grouping of seven over a grouping of four. So we have one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And while that's going on, there's going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 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 one. So we have a little bit of a polyrhythm happening there. I don't think of it like that. I don't think of it as being overly polyrhythmic. It's really just, I'm playing 16th notes against this. One E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one E and a, and they happen to be groups of seven. This predetermined chunk of notes that I've come up with. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one. All right, so that seven is very simple as far as what it is. It's a paradiddle diddle with a bass drum at the end. So you have right, left, right, right, left, left, kick, pair, a, di, do, di, do, kick. Now I don't think of that as a septuplet because I'm not playing seven notes per pulse. If it was seven notes for every one of these, then they would be septuplets. But because I'm playing 16th notes, one E and a, two E and a, in groupings of seven, that's when we say it's a group of seven. Okay, so this little group of seven is pair a diddle diddle, pair a diddle diddle, pair a diddle diddle, pair a diddle diddle. Okay. And I'm accenting the first note and ghosting the rest of the notes. So let's try that. This is the first part of the independence exercise. This is the first time that you'll actually fall off the throne and smash your face on the ground. This is really hard. We're gonna try to do that just between snare and bass drum, no orchestration, while going one E and a, two E and a, three E and a, keep on counting, five E and a, six E and a, seven E and a, one. That was 60 beats per minute and that is freaking difficult, absolutely. But when you go that slow, instead of just kind of mashing it all together and praying for the best, you really can hear how the notes are lining up. And you can hear if you're equidistant with your notes in the snare versus the kick against the pulse, all of those things. So as excruciating as it is, please don't skip going slow. It's so important. All right, now moving on. This is an independence exercise. I'm done teaching it. That's all it is. Can you do this grouping of seven against this quarter note pulse with your left foot? I used to think, I remember seeing a Virgil Donati video back in the day from the Modern Drummer Festival where he was doing, I don't know, maybe inverted paradiddles with his feet while doing standard paradiddles with his hands or something like that. I remember watching that and just thinking, useless, lame, stupid. And then I, you know, as I grew up and stopped being such a naysayer, I realized that these things aren't about like, well, how do I use that? And how do I use that? It's like, slow down. The fact that you try to do something that you physically can't do, that causes you to make massive breakthroughs independence-wise on the instrument. So if I can do this grouping of seven against a quarter note pulse with my foot, how, how easy is this gonna be for me next time I'm playing this on a gig, right? I have the independence now, let me see if I can get this quiet enough, I have the independence now to, well hell, speak to a camera while doing this. Or I could be thinking of something practical like, hey is my bass drum too quiet in this room, let me bring up the kick just a little bit, but not the hands. Or I could be thinking, uh, you know what, we're dragging a little bit, 
Let me give the band a little extra hi-hat so they can hear the tempo because the hi-hat cuts through better than kick and snare. That's the kind of independence that this type of exercise will give you. So it's not just about like, well, when am I gonna use it, bro? It's like, I, I'm freaking calm down, man. I don't know, have a matcha, we'll make it work. So let's give this a shot. Goal tempo is 120 beats per minute. I'm gonna start on the snare and I'll slowly start moving around the kit and that will be your goal as well. Now, I'm not saying that this is the independence exercise that you should all be working on. What I'm saying is this might be where you're at in your drumming right now and you want something that challenges you that you can't do in just a 20 minute practice session or a day. Or maybe this takes you a week or a month, but it's fun because it's binary. Like it's binary like code, a one or a zero. You, when you sit down, you won't be able to do this unless you've done it before. You will not be able to do this. So it's a zero. But if you practice enough, there is a moment where that thing just clicks and goes, Doop, it's now a one, I can do it. And that's a sense of accomplishment that we don't always get in groove and texture and working on our feel. Like, we don't know, like, is it any better? Working on my timing, it's like, yeah, I think I'm in time. Like, this is one of those things, just like a skate trick, where you, you know, you go off the stairs, little heel flip, and you eat sh stuff. You eat stuff, and you go like, that's a zero, I didn't make it. Keep doing it, keep doing it, keep doing it, and finally you land your trick, and you have that moment of exhilaration where it's like, oh my God, I did it. That's how these exercises are. So it's kind of one of those things where it's like, just chip away at this, have fun with it, and there will be a moment where you freak out and you're like, oh my God, I did it. I did this seven against four, and that is a very cool thing. So I hope you had fun with this, YouTubers, but until next time, go practice.